Are you considering a career in electrical engineering in the United States? Electrical engineering is arguably one of the most diverse disciplines within engineering. Engineering is typically looked at from the lens of four fundamental principles. You may argue that there are other fundamental disciplines in addition to mechanical, chemical, civil, and electrical. All of these four fundamental disciplines, by far electrical engineering is the most diverse because it encompasses power systems engineering, electronics, telecommunication, electrical and biomedical, arguably mechatronics, and a lot of schools also consider computer engineering, hardware engineering, as well as software engineering within the same electrical and computer engineering department. This video is going to be more geared towards the power systems engineering side of electrical engineering. So what are the current trends in electrical engineering job market? I completed my undergraduate studies in electrical engineering in 2010 and then my graduate studies in 2013. Back then, power systems engineering was considered to be one of the more conservative, slow and steady discipline within electrical engineering. But over the last decade, this persona of power systems engineering has completely changed. As you probably know, I run FE electrical and computer exam preparation courses as well as P power exam preparation courses. What I have observed in the last couple of years is that not only electrical engineers are taking the licensing more seriously because there's more demand from the employers, but even non-electrical engineers such as mechanical engineers, civil engineers, and even chemical and petrochemical engineers are leaning more and more towards power systems engineering if they've been exposed to it in the field. Software engineers are also moving in this direction. While most of these disciplines are great if you have interest in software, if you have interest in mechanical, chemical, civil, all of these disciplines are great, but for the most part, they are not undergoing a rapid growth like electrical engineering. And as I mentioned, back in 2010, back in 2013, when I was going through my academics, these fields were very nascent and nobody really knew how far renewable was gonna go, how far EVs were gonna go, and how far battery storage, power electronics. Power electronics has been around, but it's being deployed in various different ways now. And they're continuously emerging fields within an electrical engineering. For instance, you have cybersecurity of power systems. So now cybersecurity of power systems, who is best positioned to basically execute those roles and fill in those shoes? What are the vulnerabilities in the power grid? And they also have to have some knowledge of computer networking. When you combine the two, you basically create a specialized field of knowledge for which again, electrical engineers are best suited. Now that you have an idea about what is fueling this growth in the electrical sector and why it is attracting mechanical engineers and chemical engineers and mechatronics engineers and software engineers and computer engineers, let's talk about some of the specifics. Why is electrical engineering so interesting? If you're good with math, if you're good with physics, and if you are comfortable with abstract concepts and can make sense of different types of models in your mind and can visualize, then electrical engineering is the place to be. Now, this advice is as applicable to somebody who is about to graduate from high school and choosing disciplines for the undergraduate as it is for somebody who is in entry level position. You may or may not be in power systems engineering. You may or may not be doing electrical engineering, but you are still at a place in your career where you can pivot. As I've been mentioning, even non-electrical engineers are pivoting into power systems because of the vast opportunities and exciting roles that electrical engineering is offering. Within power systems engineering, you also have opportunities to actually work with your hands on the field. You can be a field engineer where you can be spending time up close and personal with the equipment. You can be commissioning equipment, installing equipment, providing field support, and that can take you to different places because electricity grid needs to be maintained, installed, upgraded all around the world, in every state, in metropolitan cities, offshore, onshore, Electricity needs to be provided to every corner of the United States, every corner of the world. In terms of employment opportunities, again, 
you have a huge pool of employers that are looking for skilled electrical engineers, especially if you are electrical PE, which I'm going to talk about shortly, you are in a huge demand because at the public level, municipalities, counties, cities, government bodies, Department of Energy, they're all looking for electrical engineers who can fill the owner's engineer's role. As an owner's engineer, you are basically responsible for overseeing other consultants and contractors who are designing, installing, constructing stuff based on your specification. Then in the private sector, there are a huge amount of opportunities. You have employers ranging from Amazons, Facebooks, Googles, Teslas. And by the way, these jobs do not include software or programming. I know that a lot of power systems engineers gravitated to power systems engineering because it did not include software. And I was one of them. One of the main reasons I initially opted for power systems engineering was the fact that I did not like programming. So if you're working for Amazon, Google, Facebook, all of these big tech companies, there are roles, specialized roles for power systems engineers, primarily in mission critical, in data centers, facilities, building facilities, for instance, they require power systems distribution. Then you have Teslas, then you have automotive industry, then you have mining, metals, resources, infrastructure, oil and gas, renewables. There are tons and tons of opportunities in every sector, in every city, in every state. So at this point, I'm guessing that you're probably thinking that, okay, it's all good. You have growth in electrical engineering. It is exciting, sounds fun, lots of opportunities, a wide variety of employers. You're not basically pigeonholed into a niche sector because there are tons and tons of employers who are looking for your skill. But what about the money? How much do electrical engineers make? Now, this is a tricky question because compensation is dependent on multiple factors, such as your experience level, such as your location. Obviously, the compensation because of cost of living in New York City is gonna be very different to a small town or a low cost state. And you can find different surveys. There are surveys apparently that are conducted by IEEE. There are surveys that are conducted by different engineering societies and bodies. Now, as I mentioned, the results of these surveys are not restricted to any particular state because I have students all over the US and based on my one-on-one -on -one interaction with students, to be honest, a lot of students have been able to negotiate salaries even higher than 150K very comfortably when they become PEs. And in order to become a PE, you have to have four to five years of experience. So that goes without saying. So if you have four to five years of experience and you're able to get the PE license, then there are lots and lots of employers that are looking for you. So this is the general overview of opportunities for electrical engineers in the United States right now. And the future seems bright and make yourself extremely valuable in the job market. I would recommend you to jump on to your P licensing journey so that you can have the credentials, the experience and make your profile stand out for tons and tons of employers out there. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of these exams, then click here to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.